Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is separating equilibrium. This is the first time we'll have solved for a perfect Bayesian equilibrium in a signaling game, and we're going to start as simple as possible. Nevertheless, PBE gets really complicated really quickly in signaling games. And so despite the fact that we're going to do this in the simplest framework as we can, this is still going to take a while. My recommendation is get comfortable. Here we go. This is the game that we're going to be looking at. Think about it as a war game between state one and state two. Nature begins the game by drawing state one as either a strong type or a weak type. You can think about this as state one having competent tank drivers or incompetent tank drivers. The probability is 0.6 that player one is strong. So 60% of the time player one is strong and 40% of the time player one is weak. Player one observes this information. Player one knows whether he is strong or weak and can choose whether to reveal that information to player two or hide that information. If player one reveals that information, player two observes directly whether player one is strong or weak and chooses whether to fight or quit. This is the top half of the game tree. Player two's incentives are structured such that it is a bad idea to fight a strong type but a good idea to fight a weak type. Player one's other option is to hide this information. So rather than demonstrating how competent its tank drivers are, it doesn't do anything to reveal that information to player two. In that case, we see something a little bit more complicated than what we observe up top. Now player one's decisions are connected by that dashed line, indicating that player two does not directly observe whether player one is strong or weak. All she sees is that player one has tried to hide this information from her. That's it. Nothing more. It's possible that player two will be able to infer something by that decision to hide, and we'll actually see that in a moment, but it's not going to be a result of a direct observation. Again, player two's incentives here are the same as before, where she would like to fight a weak type of player one, and she would like to quit against a strong type of player one. But unlike before, Again, she does not directly observe whether player one is strong or weak. The only other adjustments to the payoff I've made is that player one gets a slight penalty for revealing that information to player two about the competency of his tank drivers. Maybe that's because he has to spend the time and the gasoline, the man hours to drive those tank drivers around to demonstrate that they're competent. But those are the payoffs for you. Now let's get to solving it. I said that we're going to start with a simple version of a signaling game, and half of this game tree is actually very simple. Think about what's going on up top. If player one has revealed his type, revealed whether his tank drivers are competent or not to player two, then player two directly observes that information and doesn't face any sort of uncertainty anymore. All of that uncertainty has been alleviated by the structure of the interaction. As a consequence, player two can apply simple, straightforward, backward induction just like we've always used. So on the left side here, player one has revealed that he's strong and player two can either fight and receive a payoff of negative one or quit and receive a payoff of zero. She will quit, zero is better than negative one. On the other side, on the right, player one has revealed that he's weak and now player two can either fight and receive a payoff of 0.5 or quit and receive a payoff of zero. 0.5 is better than zero so player two will fight under those circumstances. Now we can take that information and simplify our original game tree. I'm gonna actually highlight the strategies in deep colors because this is gonna get complicated and having that visualization will really help us out here. And I've also deleted the other information because we don't need it, it's gone. Player two would never take those other strategies. Now we can get to the actual signaling part of this game. We're going to be looking for separating equilibrium as the title of this lecture has indicated. And a separating equilibrium involves the following. Each type is going to take a unique set of actions. In this case, it's going to be one type choosing one strategy and another type choosing another strategy. And what's special about separating equilibrium is that uninformed players learn everything about their opponents after observing an equilibrium move. If one move has been made, it can only be made by a single player. And so as a consequence, the player two, in this case, will know player one's type by the move that it's made. Not directly, but by inferring that only one type would make that sort of move. 
And this is going to make the rest of the game relatively easy and straightforward to solve for as compared to what we're going to see when we look at pooling equilibria and semi-separating equilibria later in this unit. In any case, this is going to be our four-step path to trying to find separating equilibria. First, we're going to identify a set of separating strategies. Then we're going to solve for the other player's best response to those strategies. So we're essentially looking for what the equilibrium best response would be to step one in step two. And then in step three, we're going to check whether the first player can profitably deviate given what we've observed in those best responses in that second step. So again, this is trying to verify that the strategies that the players are choosing that we've assumed could be a part of a separating equilibrium are actually optimal. And if they are, congratulations, we found a separating equilibrium. If not, back to the drawing board. And in fact, we're going to repeat step one until we've exhausted all possible sets of separating strategies. Let's get to it. Let's start applying it to the game that we're looking at. So we start off by trying to identify a set of separating strategies. Well, what does that mean here? Well, here's an example. It's the intuitive separating strategies that you might think of in this sort of game, where the strong type is revealing and the weak type is hiding. So these are separating because one type is only doing one thing and another type is only doing another thing. Those things are distinct. So that gives us a set of strategies. Now let's solve for the other player's best response to those strategies. Now this is much more complicated than what we've observed previously. Separating equilibria is going to simplify things a little bit for us, but it's not as straightforward as what we've observed before with simple backward induction. What we have to define here are posterior beliefs of player two about player one's type. Again, that's because player two does not directly observe player one's type based off of the hide move. She can only infer things based off of that move and based off of who she's anticipating would make that move. She doesn't directly observe that player one is strong or weak. So to represent this fact, I have put P and one minus P as player two's posterior beliefs about player one's type. Now, perfect Bayesian equilibrium gives us a very well-defined way of trying to decide what P and one minus P should be. So if we go back to the definition of perfect Bayesian equilibrium, players update their beliefs via Bayes' rule wherever possible. Now, the application of Bayes' rule is actually very straightforward here. We have those prior beliefs of 0.6 and 0.4, 0.6 strong, 0.4 weak, but in this assumed or proposed equilibrium, only the weak type of player one chooses to hide. So conditional on re reaching the hide information set, the only way player two can have gotten here is if player one was weak and chose to hide. Player one as the strong type never chooses to do that. So the posterior belief that player two has about player one's type is that with probability one, given these separating strategies, player one is weak. Now what do we do? Well, perfect Bayesian equilibrium also tells us what needs to be the case about the strategies that players play. Specifically, the strategies need to be sequentially rational given the player's beliefs. Think about what that means here. In this case, player two does not directly observe whether player one is strong or weak, so she doesn't know directly from being at this hide move, whether she's on the left side or the right side, but she can infer based on the fact that only the weak type is supposed to be hiding in this case, that she definitely has to be in that bottom right corner. And so the only utilities that she's going to compare when she chooses her strategy of whether to fight or quit is the fact that we're on that right side and that player one is definitely weak. And if that's the case, then 0.5 is better than zero. And so she should fight. It is completely inconsequential what's on the left side for right now. It will be important in a moment when we look for profitable deviations. But purely in terms of deriving player two's best response here, that information on the left side of the game tree, that fight produces a payoff of negative one and quit produces a payoff of zero, that information is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is what's going on in the bottom right. Okay, so we have now solved for all of the strategies. We know player one's strategy, both for whether he's tight or whether he's strong or whether he's weak. And we also know player two's best response in those circumstances. Now we have to move on to step three. We have to check whether the first player can profitably deviate. And this is where we get into more complicated strategic thinking, where player one can abuse the fact that player two does not observe whether player one is directly a strong or weak type 
given that hide strategy. So it needs to be the case that player one doesn't want to try to do something tricky and maybe try to bluff something else. And if that's the case, then we don't have an equilibrium. If it's the case that player one doesn't want to try to cheat or lie or bluff, then we have an equilibrium. All right, let's try doing this now using the game tree that we have there. We have to check for both the strong and the weak type having profitable deviations, and we have to do those one by one. Can't do them at the same time. So let's go ahead and just focus on the strong type for a moment. According to the proposed equilibrium strategies, player one is supposed to reveal, and then after that, player two will quit. In that case, player one gets a payoff of 0.99 as the strong type. His alternative is to hide. Now, player one is not supposed to do that according to this equilibrium strategy. And as a consequence, player two is under the false impression that player one is weak if player one is the strong type were to do this. And because player two thinks that player one is weak, she fights. In that case, player one gets a payoff of 0.5. So what we see here is that the strong type does not have a profitable deviation. If he sticks to his equilibrium strategy, he gets 0.99. If he hides, he gets a payoff of 0 0.5. 0 0.99 is better than 0.5. Player one is the strong type is perfectly happy. Now let's check the right side of the game tree and make sure that the weak type doesn't have a profitable deviation. Well, currently she hides. And if she hides, then player two fights and she gets a payoff of 0.5. And player one gets a payoff of negative one. Negative one being the important piece of information right here. All right, well, if player one as the weak type were to deviate from his alleged equilibrium strategy, then player two fights, and player one as the weak type gets a payoff of negative 1.01. Well, that's actually worse than what he gets by sticking to his strategy, that weak type hiding and then getting a payoff of negative one. And so, once again, the weak type does not have a profitable deviation. He's better off sticking with the strategy that was originally proposed, and he does not want to try to cheat or lie or pretend to be something else. He's perfectly happy staying where he is. So what that means is that we found a separating equilibrium. In that separating equilibrium, the strong type reveals the information, the weak type hides it, player two quits when the strong type reveals, fights when the weak type reveals, and fights when she observes player one hide. Think about what's going on here. Player two quitting when the strong type is revealing, fighting when the weak type is revealing, and fighting when she observes player one hide. There's one piece of information here that we don't actually observe in equilibrium. Player two doesn't actually, in equilibrium, fight when the weak type reveals because that actually never occurs on the equilibrium path. Nevertheless, this is a critical piece of information. This is the same sort of logic and principles that we saw when we learned about subgame perfect equilibrium, where in an equilibrium, we have to state not only what happens on the equilibrium path of play, what we would actually observe go on if the players played the game, but we also have to talk about what would happen off the equilibrium path if players were to do something else. And the reason for it is exactly like what we saw in subgame perfect equilibrium, where what is justifying player one as the weak type hiding the information is the fact that if he were to reveal that information instead, player two is going to fight him, and that is worse for him than hiding that information and having player one or having player two fight and receive a payoff of negative one. Now you might think that we're good because we have strategies both on and off the equilibrium path, like we were we were supposed to have for subgame perfect equilibrium, but in fact, we're not all the way there yet. Think back to our definition of perfect Bayesian equilibrium. A PBE is a set of strategies and beliefs. What we have on this slide so far are just strategies. We don't have the and beliefs part that is necessary for a perfect Bayesian equilibrium. So the beliefs here are going to be, again, what we derived via Bayes rule wherever possible. And in that case, is all we have to do is add the fact that after observing player one hide, player two believes that he is weak with probability one. So that gives us a separating equilibrium. Now, if we're trying to find all separating equilibria of a game, we have to repeat step one until we've exhausted all possible information sets. So there's still one more thing that we have to do. Let's try to do it now. All right, the opposite separating strategies are where player one as the strong type hides and player two as the weak type reveals. 
So up top, we still have the same strategies as we had before for player two, because player two learns all that information. So it's simple backward induction there. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, we have to do, once again, that posterior belief updating. We have to update player two's information based off of what she's expecting player one to do. In this case, it's only the strong type that's hiding. So given that, it has to be that player two's updated belief, conditional on observing hiding, that she thinks that player one is definitely the strong type with probability one and the weak type with probability zero. In this case, now she's focusing her strategy purely on what her payoffs would be if she were thinking that player one is that strong type. So looking at her payoffs in the bottom left corner, she gets a payoff of zero for quitting, negative one for fighting, so she's going to quit. Now that we have the strategies all laid out, we look for profitable deviations. Let's just look at the left side right here. What we see is that the strong type in this proposed equilibrium is supposed to hide. And in that case, player two quits and player one gets a payoff of one. If he were to deviate to revealing, then player two will still quit, but here he only gets a payoff of 0.99. So one is better than 0.99 which means that the strong type is perfectly satisfied and does not want to deviate from his equilibrium strategy. Now let's check to see if the weak type would want to deviate. Well, in this proposed equilibrium, she reve or rather he reveals the information that he's weak and player two fights him. That gives him a payoff of negative 1.01. If he were to deviate and hide, then player two, under the false assumption that player one is a strong type, quits. And in that case, player one, as the weak type, gets a payoff of one. That is a profitable deviation. So this is not a perfect Bayesian equilibrium. Think about what's going on here. Think about what PBE is doing for us and what it's telling us about whether players would actually want to follow through on their strategies or not. What this is saying is that it cannot be the case that player two is anticipating that only the strong type of player one would want to hide that information. Because if that were the case, if the strong type were the only type that was hiding and the weak type were the only type that was revealing, then player two would want to quit following that. But that means that the weak type doesn't actually want to follow through on that proposed equilibrium strategy. She no longer, or rather he no longer wants to reveal that information. He wants to hide it and bluff, pretend to be a strong type but that's not credible here. We can't actually have that happen. We can't have player one as the weak type only being the one to reveal and never hiding and only having that strong type reveal, or rather only having that strong type hide because then the weak type would want to do it as well. Okay, this is a simple example of separating equilibrium. It's also the simplest version of a signaling game that we're going to encounter. In the next lecture, we're going to move on to a different type of equilibrium in signaling games. We're going to see pooling equilibria, which is going to make it one step more complicated. Hope you enjoy this and hope to see you next time. Take care.